the medicinal use of snakes in China, based on research conducted by Subuti Dharmananda, PhD. Additional comments by Frank Landsman, MA. Among the earliest recorded use of snakes in Chinese medicine was the application of slough snake skin described in the Shen Nong Ben Chao Jing around 100 AD. It was originally applied in the treatment of superficial diseases, including skin eruptions, eye infections or opacities, sore throat, and hemorrhoids. The use of snake gallbladder is first recorded in Ming Yi Bilu, Transactions of Famous Physicians, compiled by Tao Hong Jing and written around 520 AD, which was an update of the Shen Nong herbal with double the number of ingredients known as Shen Nong Shen Nong. In addition to the gallbladder, the skin, Fan Pi, and the meat of the pit viper were also described. They were used to treat skin diseases, pain, and intestinal hemorrhage. Other species of snakes were also mentioned in medical literature. The non-toxic black-striped snake, Wu Xiaoxie, was described in Yao Jing Ben Chao by Zhen Quan, and the toxic white patterned pit viper, or Qixie, was described in Kai Bao Ben Chao by Mai Zi in 973 AD. The earliest records of using snakes for food come from the Tang Dynasty, 680 to 907 AD, including the meat of pythons and pit vipers, though not the Monty Pythons, a British comedy team. It's likely that the more widespread use of snakes for food and medicine during the Tang period derived from Indian culture, as did the hottest curry you've ever tasted in your life that made you reach the latrines 100 meters away in 8 seconds flat. The Tang Dynasty period is especially known for its willingness to accept foreign influences, including those from India and Arabia. In ancient Egypt and Mesopotamia, many animal substances were used as medicine, in addition to Tutankhamun's earlobes and left testicle. There are at least three features of snakes that capture the attention of traditional healers. They have an incredible flexibility and speed, they shed their skin, and certain snakes are extremely poisonous when they bite which makes four, esteemed Dr. Dharmananda. The flexibility of snakes has suggested that they might be helpful in the treatment of stiffness, for example, arthritis, though proper stiffs may be past caring. Two types of snakes are currently used in several traditional and patent prescriptions for arthritis, and they're sometimes soaked in alcohol to make an extract for stiff joints to make them trip the light fantastic once again. The speed with which some snakes move indicated to traditional observers at least that as medicines their substance can move quickly around the body, carrying only a one-way ticket. Snakes are said to treat wind syndromes which likewise tend to move around quickly. However, people are also cautioned not to consume, my goodness, not to consume snake wine you thought I was drunk, when exposed to the potentially pathological agent of wind as the rapid movement of the snake medicine may aid the initial penetration of wind. Wind in traditional Chinese medicine. The pernicious influence of wind is considered the major cause of illness in traditional Chinese patterns of disharmony. It combines readily with other pathogens, giving rise to syndromes known as wind cold, wind heat and wind dampness. This pathogenic factor possesses the qualities of wind in nature, appearing without warning and constantly changing. Considered a young form of evil ki, a pathogenic factor, it often attacks the upper body, head, throat, eyes and trouser snake. Wind causes movement, so it's usually involved when there are symptoms of twitching, spasms or shaking. The organ most often affected by external wind is the lung. Internal wind, most commonly, is related to an imbalance in the liver. The fact that snakes shed their skin suggests that they have a regenerative quality for treating chronic skin problems. As a result, snake skin and whole snake are used in the treatment of skin diseases. The application is similar to the use of Slavcikata skin for treating skin ailments. 
acne, carbuncles, itching skin and psoriasis on your aunties and uncles are examples of conditions that may respond to snake skin. Snake skin is also considered useful in reducing clouding or nebula of the cornea, the skin of the eyes. Poisonous animals often cause paralysis when they bite, and this is due to the presence of neurotoxins. They are then used medically by oral administration, which greatly reduces the tox toxicity for the treatment of convulsions by inhibiting intense muscle contractions. Also, some forms of paralysis are tonic in nature, that is due to over-contractions of muscles, and in such cases the nerve toxins can overcome paralysis induced by half a dozen gin and tonics. Agigistrodon, but not Zaukis, is a poisonous snake used for epilepsy and par paralysis. Scorpions and millipedes, Scolopendra, are used similarly. Anticonvulsive activity is also ascribed to snake skin and chikara skin. In the Benchao Gangmu, 1590 AD by Li Zhizhen, it was said that Agigostrodon penetrates the bone to expel the pathogenic wind and alleviate convulsion, and is the essential material for wind arthralgia, convulsion, scabies, and malignant scabies, because it travels everywhere, outward to the skin and inwardly. It was noted in the illustrated Materia Medica that Agicostrodon has a quicker effect in treating wind syndrome than that of other snakes. Several records in Chinese medical books indicate that snake slough is useful for malignant sores such as mammary abscess and tumor, boils, carbuncles and furuncles, unfit to be seen by your uncles, let alone aliens from Uranus. The slough is usually roasted and then used both internally and topically. Snake bile has long been valued as a tonic, characterized as such by its sweet aftertaste, like kissing Marilyn Monroe. It's used to make a special health drink at snake restaurants, which are today still found in southern China, Hong Kong and Taiwan, where snake waitresses will be glad to take your orders. The bile of a snake to be eaten is mixed with some rice wine and consumed before the meal as an invigorating beverage and appetite stimulant. In the treatment of diseases, snake bile is used for whooping cough, uh, rheumatic pain, high fever, infantile convulsion, hemiplegia, hemorrhoids, gum bleeding and skin infections. One of the best known remedies using snake bile is Sanche Dan Chuan Bei Mu, or the mixture of three snake gallbladders plus the herb Fritillaria. It's made as a powder or a liquid, only the powder is imported to the West. The three snake gallbladders are usually derived from Agicostron and Zauki species, but there are numerous substitute species known and used in the marketplace. In fact, a major active component, the bile acid known as toracolic acid, was analyzed in the 16 species of snake now traded commonly and in 8 samples of snake bile and fritillaria liquids. In the Chinese pharmacopoeia, the official recipe for the mixture is one part snake bile added to six parts fritillaria powder. Dry and pulverize the mixture. The dosage is just three to six hundred milligram at a time, two to three times a day. Snake gallbladder is sometimes combined with panelia or citrus to produce an antitussive and phlegm resolving powder for treatment of acute bronchitis, turning the characteristic sharp sound of a bronchitis patient oh, oh, into a mellifluous one. Ow. The bile from two snakes, Naja Naja, Indian Cobra, and Ophiophagus Hanna, his girlfriend, show 11 bands in thin layer chromatography, TLC, while the bile from most other snakes show only 8 of these bands, indicating unique medicinal ingredients in the cobra. All the snakes contain cholic acid, but not diocycholic acid or lithocholic acid. In the marketplace, snake gallbladders are sometimes substituted by those of geese, ducks and chickens. These gallbladders have a different form that can be easily distinguished by those who make the effort to do so. Further, the TLC profile of the bile from these substitutes is entirely different from that of the snakes, and the bile from, say, ducks does not produce the sweet aftertaste common to the snake bile. 
Because there are some snakes that are now endangered species, and because the snakes or their isolated bladders are not easily identified by blind drunk officials, the US Wildlife Department has restricted import of all snake medicinal materials unless the shipment is accompanied by a suitable certificate indicating the origins of the snake and various bribes, of course. Further, the FDA has restricted import of many liquid preparations, including the liquid forms of snake bile. One means of helping to preserve snakes is to use the snake materials in powder form rather than using them in decoctions. The powder snake is usually recommended in dosages that are about one-third to one-sixth that for decoction of the same materials. The pharmacopoeia of China gives a dosage of agicostradon for decoction at three to nine grams, but for powder to be swallowed only one to one and a half grams, probably because decoction poorly extracts some active components and damages others. Cold, cold alcohol extraction, like Donald Trump's Great America beer, is considered acceptable and allows use of small doses as well. But do keep in mind that larger doses may result in un uncontrollable fits of laughter, as demonstrated here by the one and only King of Rock, Elvis Presley. Thank you very much and good night. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs>